so, so on your on your way back from Hajj, you happen to be in Dubai, right? Yeah, so it was incredible, uh, you know, and, and it's connected with the journey because I did get the last minute invite, wasn't expecting, and the only way to make it in time was to go to Dubai. I've never been to Dubai, and, uh, you know, some people said don't go for various reasons, um, and I said, you know what, it's, it's an opportunity, let me just go. Allah had me there for a reason, no doubt. He's the best of planners. Just after landing, we got the very tragic news uh, that uh, Sheikh Mohammed Al Sharif had passed away in Dubai. And subhanAllah, I messaged actually Sheikh Yasser and I said, where's the janazah? There is no way I'm missing that. You know, subhanAllah, in my life, I actually did not have the opportunity to directly study or learn uh, from Sheikh Mohammed Al Sharif, but nobody can deny anybody involved in Dawah in the West has been impacted by his work and the effort and the ihsan and the excellence. I mean, I remember 10, 15 years ago, we want to do something Make it like Maghrib. You know what I'm saying? It was that was that was the state. Make it Standard. like Maghrib. So and it was just incredible seeing the video uh, of him again calling for Ihsan and then showing up to the masjid at the cemetery and, and having the honor of praying Salat al Janazah right behind the Imam, you know, and then literally lifting his blessed body, carrying it to the car, taking it out carrying it as we put it under six feet of earth and subhanAllah I remember seeing his kefin and of course that sweet fragrance and just his hands rested laying him into the earth covering it sunnah style right and and then of course putting the earth on and just really the idea of uh, subhanAllah his, his slippers were left at the masjid where he initially you know uh, fell unconscious and, and then returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that starting in salah and i felt per, i took it you know you got to take it personal when you go through these things these are ibra these are signs for us here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing me somebody who's worked his whole life for dawah and set the bar of ihsan and excellence in dawah that people from all different schools of thought from all different methodologies benefited from seeing him laid to rest and inshallah getting the fruit of that effort and it was just like, you know, for that, let those who are working work for, you know, that's what we're working for, putting him down. And then when they, when, when they put him down, you know, what was left behind all the problems, all the, all the fits and all the small things, all the headaches, you know, it put into reality, what was important. And the amazing thing about his Janazah, I'll tell you this again, you had people from super Salafi backgrounds to super Sufi backgrounds. I don't like to use the terminology, but I'm keeping things short and quick. Everybody was there. I remember we prayed Maghrib, uh, uh, Sheikh Abu Isa, who I'd never met before, but he recognized me from from the uh, from uh, the various Dawah work online. You know, we sat and literally after Maghrib Salah, we had just buried him just before uh, Adhan al-Maghrib. So he passed away on Juma, he was buried on Juma, and then everybody went to pray together. And subhanAllah, just an impromptu conversation, 20, 30 people started telling, you know, stories, personal reflections. And really it was, it was amazing because before we buried him, it was definitely a solemn affair. But after he was buried and after we did our salat and we brought back the memories, it was actually a lot of laughter. It was, it was, there was a joy. There was a sakina that engulfed and mentioning the stories. And what was beautiful, I'll finish with this, is just talking about the very practical human stories. You know, if you're involved in dawah online, so you're on the phone a lot, you know, talking about him being on the phone, but also doing the hajj, but also calling people, you know, just being, uh, you know, somebody who, who's grown up in 2020, you know what I'm saying, in our day, day and age, but who, whose priority was working for the akhirah. Uh, so I, I I felt tremendously honored to be there, and I, I, you know I I, it, it, I feel like it has built a renewed commitment to learn from his life, from his example, and continue. May Allah accept from us I mean, to continue I mean, that example of Hassan. You know, some people talk about. Listen, you don't work for a legacy. When we say legacy, it isn't a legacy of dunya that people praise. A'udhu billah. We're talking about sadaqah jari that continues. That's what the real legacy is. Is when you do such work that continues when you're with Allah. And, and it just inspired, it, it rekindled that fire. May we all live such a life where we leave a legacy of khair that continues to benefit. Amen. Please, our Lord, after return. Yeah, I saw Arthur year. Arthur Richard was an Al-Maghrib Amir in Orlando, Florida. He was he, there. He made a janazah. I talked to him about it. You know, and I think really you took a picture of the graveyard, right? Was that you? Yes. With the yeah, yeah, Burj Khalifa the... in the background. Right, right. And people were sharing that in the WhatsApp groups as like a real reality of like, Mm. dunya and the akhira mm. you know what i mean um and a friend of mine who's a former another former amir he's like hey reach out to me he was like hey listen man, i never told you this bro but like because like he's a guy i met only through al-maghrib institute so many of my friends mm -hmm. only i met through al-maghrib sheikh yasser and i we met through al-maghrib right if it's not for al-maghrib we probably don't do this podcast we don't have that relationship 
So, you get what I'm saying? Very um, true. Very true. You know what I mean? So I think it's – he reached out to me. He's like, hey, I just want to know. I appreciate you as a brother, and I love you as a friend. Um, I just want to put it out there because at the end of the day, he woke us up like when someone passes that quickly, unexpectedly, you know, and I think it's almost like we kind of lost tra- – a lot of people who forgot who kind of Sheikh Mohammed Sharif was. He's in Dubai doing his thing, Discover You, Visionaire. And it's almost like now he's teaching us in death. Exactly. He was teaching us even in his death. Even those who did, like, I, I will tell you directly, yes, indirectly, I benefited. Directly, I didn't learn. But but learning even how his janazah was done, following the sunnah, uh, people being where they're supposed to be, people not being, people saying the right things, not saying, it was it was incredible. And also bringing people together. I met a brother at his janazah. He donated just a couple days later 50000 to my kid's school, Islamic school. So even at his janazah, people were giving something like jariyah as a result of his effort. May Allah accept from him, elevate him, forgive him, and join us with him in the highest levels of janazah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean. And Sheikh Yasser, you 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 said enough already on on uh, about Sheikh Muhammad on your on your own channel. So if there's that, a, nothing yeah. else, I, I, I'll, I'm I'm positively jealous in a good manner that our brother Hassan was there when he texted me. I got so happy that he'd be there. He was there. I texted him the Janaza location. Sure. Um, and and every, there were a number of people that flew from here. Uh, I was not able to go for specific reasons that uh, those who know know, but um, otherwise I'm not able to go to that region. But um, I would have gone if I was able to. Uh, but a number of our close friends and colleagues went, but obviously because of the flight timings, that none of them made it in time, you know, for uh, the janaza. Uh, Ustad Abrisa was in Egypt, so he had the, the closer flight. Uh, and Hassan, subhanAllah, and you just, Allah's qadr, complete Allah's qadr. You were there and others happened to be there, alhamdulillah. So it's all, it's as if you represented, you know, all of us over there. And uh, we appreciate that. And we ask Allah Azza wa to forgive our dear friend and mentor and to grant him the highest place of Jannah and uh, to allow... Uh, even his death to be a learning opportunity. I know it was definitely for me, and I've spoken about this multiple times. And inshallah, for all of us to be a, a sadaqah jariya, all that we do uh, for him, inshallah. Wa ta'ala. All right, so so see, Sidi Hassan, mashallah. I, I, you know, we, we talk about uh, how Allah invites you to Hajj, and mm-hmm. I feel like the voice notes we exchanged when you got back, I know that people got to hear the story because, especially this year, with what happened with like you know the the the, the new system, people were worried about some people who intended for years didn't get to go right so so tell me a little bit about you, you were you told me you were dry you were on the road somewhere the sunday before arafah right where the were sunday you at arafah. it was pure <laughs> a gift from allah i listen i had been you know for two three years planning that i have to go for hajj and, I, and i'm going to share this man allah give us a class but alhamdulillah I mean, the first time allah invited me to his house i was just i believe 17 barely turning 18 years old Right, And the reason I say this is I want every single person make the firm intention to go as early as you can. It will shape your life. Mm -hmm. It will change who you are. It is a tremendous gift. And you can never visit the house of Allah empty and leave empty handed. And you can every time you go, you'll take back different lessons, different gifts. So it's a gift. So, uh, of course, with COVID, you know, we hadn't gone uh, for Hajj or Umrah or anything in a few years. And I was I was. Really, this year, getting ready to go. I even we got a website, hajjwithhessen.com. I went to my friend uh, with Sarah International Travel, and I said, just save 10 visas for me. I'm not going to upcharge. I'm not going to make a dime, but I will bring you 10 people and let me be a volunteer group leader for the, for that group. So as a favor for me, he, he did that. And so we put the website up. We started, you know, recruiting, got like 60 people reaching out. And then all of a sudden, the Saudis announced that everything has to be through their new system. Mm. Um, you so know, you, you, when you went when you were eighteen, was that Umrah or Hajj? That was Hamdulillah. Was Hajj. It was Hajj. May Allah bless the righteous. I mean, I mean, man, I had a friend. I mean, may Allah bless him and elevate elevate him. Uh, you know, I, in my life, by the way, I got to say the Egyptian people. I'm Syrian, but the Egyptians have always come in rock solid. So you know uh, what? You know, I was seventeen. I had a six dollar an hour job, and he I, th- I said, "Let's go for a vacation together." He said, "Let's go for Hajj together." So I saved my money, just bought my flights, and that story. Sorry, but it, it was a miracle in of itself. Right. Because right. imagine this: I'm seventeen years old. I'm working, making six dollars an hour. I save two thousand dollars. That's enough to buy me an airplane ticket, not a full package. Right. My flight is Sunday, and I don't have the visa. So Friday, I'm 17. I book a flight to New York City. I spend the whole day in New York, right? right, At the embassy. I see Bill Clinton's passport and the embassy. I'm like, you're giving Bill Clinton a visa to go to Saudi. Give me a Muslim. What do you mean? Oh, you mean Bill Clinton was there? In, in New York? Not his, his people uh, were there. And his okay. passport was there. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they showed me his passport. So, subhanAllah, come 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And it's Friday. My flight is Sunday. I don't have the visa. They say, listen, we can excuse your 17, but we can't excuse that you don't have a full package. You got to buy a full package. Like, it's 
Friday has a Sunday, or I got to fly out Sunday. How am I going to afford a full package? I head out and I run into Imam Zamir Sattar, who I didn't know at the time. He didn't know me. Mm. And he says, what's what's the problem? And I just literally, when I left, I remember walking back, putting my head down and just making dua. Like, ya Allah. And this is the thing with Hajj. You have to not be hopeless. It teaches you don't be hopeless. Like, believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. Because Allah, there's nothing that's a miracle for him. Everything is easy. Right. So I made the firm intention, alhamdulillah. I go in the elevator. It's 11 o'clock on Friday night. My flight's Sunday. No visa. He, and, and I see him in the elevator. I don't even say anything. He says, what's wrong? I said, you know, I got my flights to go for Hajj but I don't have a visa and I can't afford a full package, but I have, I have connections there. So once I get there, I'll be fine. He said, give me your passport. He puts a sticker on, you're with my company. You got my package, go for, go for Hajj. And subhanAllah, they gave me the visa. And I went at 17, didn't know what I was doing. It was an incredible journey. You know, I remember being lost in Mecca without money. You gotta be careful because people come to you and they, they ask for money. So I, I didn't realize I gave whatever, I stuff for a lie. I didn't, you know, I had like 20 bucks with me I, I, and I lost it. And I remember just, it was, it was, I got the nickname than Hajj Tawakkalna. You just put your tawakkul and trust mm. in Allah. But the point is, it was through the barakah of that first Hajj right. that Allah, through His graciousness, and, and, and I billah, this is not, I would in any way bragging. I'll be real with you. The dirty laundry goes in the washing machine the most. You know, I think maybe every year Allah sees you, like, I said, get in the laundry. Ya Allah, we're going to wash them up this year. And I'll take it, my Lord. I will take it. You know, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. No, you know, that's a myth. So this is your second Hajj? Yeah, alhamdulillah, they're, they're, I've been there, uh, you know. Uh, okay, alhamdulillah. So, you know, you mentioned, you, you just ring, Imam Ghazali Institute. That's, uh, yeah, Zuk, yeah, Sheikh Zamir. yeah, 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 you're right. But, but I think that's, uh, because I, I did Hajj in 2015, right? And, and, I'll, and I'll share this. We talked about Quad S really briefly, right? I'll be very, I think I've, I don't know if I've said this pretty openly. Yeah. Before I go to Hajj, in 2011, I got hit, I started getting hit with Quad S. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I remember I reached out to, um, you know, I was trying to go through the redress number. I don't know if you remember Rabia Khan from Care Chicago. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I worked with Rabia a little bit and, you know, trying to get it resolved and everything. And as I'm going to Hajj. So I talked to my good friend, Danish Siddiqui, um, who's involved in Al Maghrib in Memphis. You know, one of, one of the guys I know through Al Maghrib. Um, mm -hmm. And he's, he was on, he had Quad S for seven years. He's mm -hmm. like, Maheen, when, when you go to Hajj, you make, you make the off, get that Quad S off every toe off. Let's right <laughs> and so i'm like and he's like and then he's the thing if it doesn't happen like don't like blame allah like maybe there's some shortcoming you still had right just just just, just be critical of yourself right so i'm like all right cool cool right so really it's it's like i mean you know you know you got your book of du'as because I, I think the thing about hajj is like we don't we also don't understand how to make du'a normally Bro. but then all of a sudden like when you're on the plane what are you doing you're just reading quran and like reading the du'a book and reading, re reviewing that stuff, right? So it's not like you're watching a movie, like the entertainment, none of that stuff, right? You're doing all that. So I'm getting prepared. I'm like every du'a, every chance you get, you're getting like one of the du'as is get me off this quad S list and you never bring me back, right? So I'm expecting, I'm expecting that when I come back, you know, to America, it's going to be gone. I, 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 I get, I get to Dubai airport. Um, and it's there. And I'm kind of like, oh, well, you know, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, energy is like, yeah, I guess Donish said, don't like you blame yourself. It's probably something I, I probably got mad at somebody who knows, whatever. <laughs> right. I get back the same stuff, whatever. My very next flight happened in November. This is September, 2015. In November of 2015, um, I, I was going to go visit my parents. And you know, if you, if you're on quad S, you got to go to the airport like two hours in advance. At least, because because I remember when I was in a line for Hudge, I was a, we got there super early, like four hours in advance. I was first guy in line, and they, I held up line for th for thirty minutes because they were just on the phone waiting to get clearance. Yep, like this, yep. You know I've I mean? been there. I've been you know there. What I mean? So, um, twenty in, in November twenty fifteen, I remember it was I was flying to Columbus, Ohio, on a Friday morning, okay, and Thursday afternoon I had an interview. Actually, at the company I work now, but before I I had turned them down before in twenty fifteen, but I came back to them. I'm driving there and Rabia calls me and she's like, Hey, Maheen, I'm not sure if you heard the news, but there were four arrests made in Columbus, Ohio. Remember I alluded to that earlier mm -hmm. in the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know these guys? And she'd rattle. I'm like, what are their names? She rattles them off. And I'm like, subhanAllah. Yeah. I know these guys. And so I was like, well, maybe that explains some situation, right? Anyways, I go Friday morning, Friday morning. I go to the airport two hours early. The drill is always, I go to the kiosk for Southwest and I put it in, I punch it in and it says, please go to the counter. 
you cannot check in online or whatever. You got to go to the counter. I put it in my stuff and my boarding pass just spits out. And I look at Ooh, it. That feels good. And there's no quad S. <laughs> and part of me was like, what like and I and I and I, first the, the the thought entered my mind like oh maybe TSA was so generous that as soon as they found out about these four guys they got their guys they know I'm affiliated with them they just cleared me mm. I was like probably not because that literally happened last night yeah that should have increased your SSC <laughs> right exactly right maybe because because you know they, they messed up because because they did they did what you know they you know what they do is you know you know the drill three four degrees separation they just kept searching around right and. One of these guys I ran against MS I ran against him for MSA president. You know what I mean? Mm. So like I was just like, man, like I tell you what that gives you. And I was like, well, it actually works. And you know, and and, and you shared some stuff about stuff that's already happened for you since you've been back. Bro, it's been crazy. You know what I mean? Bro, I had my dua answered my I answered last night. <laughs> yeah, no, my I'll talk about it. I don't care, man. A luck at you, bro. A luck at you. Are are you are you are you open talking about it? Like you I'm told us. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so, so, anyways, we'll, we'll 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 save that for the very end, I guess. So, anyways, yeah, th- that was my thing, and then one of the duas I also made was like, oh, I want to, um, you know, Allah, let me do something for the community because mm. I was trying to do something. I, I had my full time job, mm. family. I'm like, but I don't feel like I'm doing anything else, right? And that happened in April 2016. The Mad Mamluks literally falls into my lap. Allah Akbar. Allah you know what I'm Akbar. saying? Like I, this podcast came out, and um, I remember I met Sim at a lunch that I that he was there to recruit Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jungda to be his guest. Allah. And then I distracted because I was I listened to their first content, their first episodes, and I was like, mm. "Hey man, I love your show." Remember the time Muslim mm. podcasts were not a thing, but I was a podcast connoisseur still. Mm. And within a week, I was a full time host. Mashallah. Right. So I was thinking about that, like how that happened, because I, I, I didn't know I, it was one of those duas. You're like, well, I think use me in some way. I mean, right. That's right. It. You know what that's I mean? It. So anyways, yeah. So now, now let's fast forward to your Hajj now. Let's talk let's about say, this. Yeah, yeah this, this is wild. OK, so go ahead. Yeah, it was it was it was incredible. I mean, look, it's it's no secret. I, Allah's blessed me and I say blessed. Yep. I mean, yep. with, with some tests in the last couple of years and Alhamdulillah, I'm so grateful for it. Look, I mean, I, subhanAllah, when it was raining here, I'm in, I'm in the uh, forests of North Carolina right. uh, and the mountains, you know, you realize the beauty of the dark days is if you don't have dark days, you don't have rain. And if you don't have rain, you don't have growth. And right. the same comes with the dark days, the challenging days in our life. It's what allows the, the spiritual rain to penetrate the heart, right? Mm-hmm. When you learn tawakkul, when you learn sabr, when you learn shukr, when you get to that realization that, you know what? As long as I have a good opinion of my Lord, he will never disappoint me. As long as I trust in him. And that's what you're learning. So alhamdulillah, it was such a gift after such a crazy year. You know, I, so I, I told you, I was planning. We got the domain name, hajjwithhassan.com. I was going to go. I was going to take a group. And then... The new system comes out like a month before Hajj and it, I'm like, you know what? It's over. It's not happening. I'm like, let me just try. Uh, so I go online and I, I fill up the lottery. I don't get it. You know, Alhamdulillah, khalas, uh, it's not happening. And I just sort of, you know, uh, wrote it off. Then like on Thursday. So this is the, uh, the Thursday on the week before Hajj. My mother FaceTimes me and I'm talking to her. I'm like, mom, you know, what are you doing? And, and she's watching the Fajr Salah in the Haram in Mecca from her home TV mm-hmm. live. And Allah's grace, you know, it just, I felt it. You know what I'm saying? And, and my eyes cheered up and I, you know, you call your Lord in just a, a small way. Look, and there's people who, whose call is much more sincere, who's much stronger, but Allah's generous. He doesn't give based on how much we deserve. He gives according to his generosity. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, when I saw the Kaaba and people praying, and I just had that sincere wish in my heart, I wish I could go. And again, you sort of write it off, but you still have that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially hearing the chaos, hearing what was happening with people, people who have been planning and aren't able to go, people who paid and couldn't confirm their booking. It was a mess. All of a sudden, alhamdulillah, a couple of days later, literally the Sunday before Hajj, I get a phone call. Uh, I get a message on LinkedIn. It sounded like one of those scams. Hey, you want to go for Hajj this year? <laughs> I said, of course. <laughs> well, send me $100. No, no. He, he said, listen, send me your password. He's like, listen, there's some visas allocated for people who've been to Hajj before who can come and just be on the ground helping Hajj. You have to pay for your own journey, you know, 
uh, but but we'll, you can get a visa as long as you make the intention to help the Hajjaj and 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 be there on the ground uh, just to support your fellow Hajjaj because there's a lot of confusion. Mm-hmm. And Subhanallah, so I, I I fill in the paperwork and I get approved on the lottery. I think Sunday. It takes me until Monday to get to log into the system. By Monday, like noon, I finally apply for the visa or apply to apply for the visa on there. And then I realize Hajj is like Friday. I have to be in Saudi by Tuesday night if I'm going to go for Hajj. So now it's now or never, but I don't have the visa. Uh, I call my friend because they gave me two spots and I, I called my friend uh, Faisal Latif. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I said, listen, uh, you know, you want to go for Hajj? He said, yes, but we didn't have the visa yet. So I said, well, look, the good news is they're saying we're going to get the visa. Bad news is we don't have the visa right now. And, uh, you know, if we go, we could potentially not get let in. And we got to pay, you know, $3,000 each for our flights. Should we do it or not? You know, he's like, listen, all I have right now is $3,000. But when Allah gives you an opportunity, you take it and you trust in him. And Allah loves those who trust in him. Mm. I said, all right, Bismillah. So, you know, I literally jump on my computer and I see what flights are going to the Middle East. I can't go to Saudi because I don't have a visa, but I got to get to the Middle East to a country that doesn't require a visa. And I see it was it was like three o'clock. I see a nine o'clock flight leaving out of Orlando. I live in Tampa. So nine three p.m. O'clock. Three p.m. You see they see a nine o'clock flight. Yes. Same day. Same day. I cu- tell him, I said, we have to leave within an hour to go to the airport. It's going to take us two hours. You know, uh, so bro, it takes like a week to pack for Hajj. Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> So I literally went in my closet and just go everything. Bro, I literally traveled like this. People, I gave a lecture over there for the Hajjaj. Yeah. Brothers would complain, who's that guy thinking he could give a, a lecture and a t-shirt in Hajj? <laughs> so I'm like, I just want to get there. Literally, I pack in like 20 minutes, mm-hmm. alhamdulillah. And um, he picks, his mom picks me up. We go to the airport. They almost didn't let us on the flight when they thought we were going for I said, no, no, we're just going for Dubai. We're going for Dubai. We're going to chill in Dubai. And that was our backup plan. I guess if we don't get into Hajj, we hang out in Dubai. Um, and subhanAllah. So we get on the flight. I get the internet. So you, was your, did you have the full flight? It was Dubai to Medina? The no, it was, I just bought, I bought two separate flights. I bought a flight to Dubai. It can't be the same flight to Saudi because if it's the same flight, you got to have a ah. Saudi visa. So it has to be two separate. So I bought a flight to Dubai and then a separate Saudi flight leaving a few hours later to Jeddah. Oh, so you have you had a direct Orlando to Dubai? Correct. Oh, I, I didn't know Orlando had direct to Dubai. Yes, That's it's a, incredible, bro. 15-hour okay. flight. We were chilling. Alhamdulillah, man. I tell you what. We're in that flight. I get the internet. Uh, you know what? I always use a pro tip. When, when you're traveling with a friend, don't book two seats next to each other. Book a window and an aisle, and there's a chance you might keep the middle one free for yourselves. So, like me and Faisal were taking turns sleeping, resting. You know, it was, it was yeah, the last yeah. of the trip. I bought that package. I'm checking it. And Allahu Akbar. An hour before we land in Dubai, we get the email that our visas have been approved and we get the visas and PDFs on our phone. Mm-hmm. And it was just an incredible moment. I caught, I caught Faisal's reaction, uh, you know, when I told him. And it was such a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. So we, we landed in Dubai. We changed, shower, got in our home. We're about to board our flight. And they're literally, as we're boarding the flight, they're like, you can't board in Ihram. It's too late now. You're past the deadline. I was like, no, nah, brother, it's not past the deadline. Alhamdulillah. The Saudis had extended the deadline. I showed them. We good. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really blessed us. And, and it was just a beautiful experience. And, you know, a friend of mine really, you know, subhanahu told remind him just to be grateful that this year so many i mean far better people people who are lead groups in hajj people who are servants mashaykh scholars of the community that go every year um you know uh, weren't able to go and it's it's so humbling that, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this this opportunity that i think we needed you know it was it was beautiful and in that journey um alhamdulillah was making a lot of dua for my own situation for my family for my children and and we just kept seeing barakah on barakah on barakah man well, alhamdulillah we completed the hajj we had a friend he had an apartment in mecca so we stayed in his apartment in mecca uh, a friend uh subhanallah invited us to stay in his hotel in medina allah just took care of us and we were able to serve the hajjaj support the hajjaj we were able to do programs to inspire the hajjaj it was such a beautiful experience then after the hajj was over uh, able to go to dubai and and pray the janazah of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif 
Subhanallah, meet a brother who donated from his personal business to my children's school. Alhamdulillah, during Hajj and the day of Arafah, we raised $25,000 through launch good to support Syrian orphans. When I was in Medina, somebody found me online, a sister found me online, said, brother, I want to feed the hungry of Medina. Can I raise money and do that? I thought she was going to send a few hundred dollars. I was going to buy some sandwiches. Bro, sister raised $5,000, mm. mashallah. So we went in Medina uh, to the supermarket. We bought, alhamdulillah, enough food to last 50 families a month, and we distributed I swear swear by Allah, this is just a reflection of his mercy. It's nothing we did. It's when Allah wants to use you, it doesn't matter. You know, the world can't stop you. Allah will take and may he accept. Alhamdulillah. So it was Alhamdulillah. You, you know, and it's, it would be remiss if we didn't mention Sheikh Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad and Sharif and Hajj go together like peas and carrots. Um, yes. Because uh, the last time I saw him was in Hajj. Subhanallah. I saw him because his tent was, I went with Sheikh Omar Suleiman, Hilal Hajj. Mm. With who I think is the best group, by the way. Mm, mm. You know, so if the groups come back, go with Hilal, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I think those days uh, are over, but inshallah, yeah. No. And then Muyasser was Sheikh Muhammad's group, right? And mm. Sheikh Muyasser, Sheikh Muhammad always, their group is like no frills, like n mm. not a lot of luxury, but their tent right. was across from us. And we'd right. see them because they'd also come for the, they would do the whole Mina conference before Arafah, right? Was, that year was Sheikh Muhammad, Sheikh Omar, mm. Mufti Kamani. And I remember I, I ran into him outside like just though between our tents and we're just ch ch chatting about meeting in ohio back in the day and i'll real briefly and stuff but i want to say because somebody asked me this i know he hadn't done hajj through the i believe not through the covid but i want to say he had a streak of something crazy like 25 or 26 straight years of doing hajj Oof, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> because Allahu when we went in 2015 he was like on year 20 straight consecutive subhanallah <laughs> well listen there's a beautiful hadith and again it isn't us but the prophet yeah. said yeah. allah forgives the hajji yeah. and the one the hajji prays for right. and the hadith right. even says that on the day of arafah the angels even say okay allah but there's some like really bad sinners amongst the hajjaj allah right. like forgive them too there's yeah. a group that nobody's deprived so alhamdulillah although he couldn't go for hajj that year at least he had a hajji there at the janazah and it was an honor really it's i think yeah. I mean, I, I will, uh, you know, obviously it's early to tell, but I would, I, I, I see this being a pivotal moment in my life being at his janazah because he was somebody who was committed to dawah. We saw he died like he lived, mashallah, at salah in the masjid, buried on Jum'ah. And we hope that we can continue the message of ihsan and excellence uh, in the dawah uh, field. I mean, sh sh shukran, jazakallah khair, much appreciated. Um, all right, Hassan, thanks for, thanks for sharing. Uh, so, oh, oh, so you mentioned the, the du'a. You, you, well, before the, the we get into that, listen, CBP, oh. you've been stopped at the border. So yeah. also when I was coming back making du'a, they don't stop me. They okay. used to stop me as well. Right. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we get right through uh, U.S. Customs. Okay. Uh, uh, no issues whatsoever. I see the supervisor. He comes by and says hi as a friend. And then I'm waiting for one of my friends. They don't come out. 10 15 minutes i'm like bro where are you yeah uh, uh, he said they picked me out i'm like tell him you were with hassan so yeah. he literally saw the supervisor told him he was in the end they let him through if muslims are suffering uh, uh with the harassment of course dua is the number one thing but mm -hmm. number two alhamdulillah you know in my law firm we help with this so you know if, if you don't mind muslimlegal.com muslimlegal.org we right. do help people who are facing this. Care also does this free of charge. I think MLFA as well. But yep. if you want to hire a private lawyer, Bismillah, we're here to help. But finally, man, you know, in this dua, in, in this hajj, I was making dua for, again, if it's for anyone other than Allah, I thought it was impossible. Uh, you know, Shaitan, he really is focused on destroying families and putting enmity between each other. Uh, and, and, and subhanAllah, uh, unfortunately, uh, I went through a very difficult situation in terms of my divorce. It, uh, it, uh, people took advantage of the situation, a lot of defamation, lies, slander. And, and so I was just making dua, despite the pain, despite the hurt, that I could just finish this on amicable terms. And I hadn't even spoken to my ex-wife in, in about two years, you know. And you, look, you, Subhanallah, you know, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. It was, it was again, it was a very painful thing. And it was the effect of this sort of ultra secularism. That's why I spoke about it earlier as well. Right. You know, and I, and I see her as a victim to it, unfortunately. Um, so I was just making dua, Ya Allah, let us just close this chapter. And even on amical ter terms. And for people who know who what happened and, mm -hmm. and, and the injustice that was done to me, mm -hmm. they would know that amical terms is impossible unless Allah really opens her heart and Allah gives me the ability to forgive as well. Right. So right. I made that dua and subhanAllah, 
I wasn't expecting this, but yesterday, you know, we were in the, you know, in the mediation and her lawyers, my lawyers were all in a separate room and the mediator's like, this isn't getting anywhere with the lawyers. It's going to be an impasse. So she says, why don't you two just talk to each other? I said, Bismillah. So we talked to each other for the first time in two years. And subhanAllah, she even got to the point of apologizing for what happened. Oh. And then we just were able to amicably close the chapter. And that was something I was praying for. And again, for those who know, would have thought it was impossible. And to be able to, to go through that, to have that level of forgiveness, and to really, no matter what had happened and the injustice that was done and that I had faced, but to get back to be amicable for the sake of my children, that was a dream of mine. And I mentioned this, look, people don't like to talk about this. We, Especially if you're in the public, like, you have to be like a statue of fakeness, to be honest. But we all face real challenges, including divorce. And unfortunately, people watching this may go through it. My advice to them, don't give up hope in Allah. Don't give up hope. In, in having good opinion of him, he will get you through no matter how bad it is. Just be grateful to him. Be grateful for the difficult times. Keep your trust in him. He won't let you down. And listen, it may take one, two, three years. It may take more, but be willing to forgive no matter what was done to you, mm -hmm. especially if you have children. And when you have that forgiveness mentality, you will find, as Allah says, respond to, to, to harshness with that which is better and your worst enemy will become your, your, your close friend. And Alhamdulillah, I answered my dua yesterday. Uh, you know, we, we were able to close this chapter on amicable terms, finally communicate in a positive way. And, and I'm excited and I'm grateful and I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I feel like he set me for that through the hajj and through mm. the du'as. And just he prepared me. Just trust in Allah. He'll never disappoint you. I mean, all right. Jazakallah khair, Hassan. Uh, much appreciate. I, and I think the message is, if you haven't gone to hajj, Go to Hajj. Go to Hajj, right? <laughs> that's it. That's you know it. what I mean? I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think it's like you, your story is nothing short of miraculous. Mm -hmm. You know, when people like if people have doubt or doubt in faith or, you know, I don't know how they can hear that story and like, mm -hmm. you know, have any have any doubt, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, alhamdulillah.